It always feels good when you are appreciated. SLT Non-Stop Broadband. Free loyalty data added as you stay connected. Tonight, truth and dare. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa challenges government to rip up AXA, SOFA and MCC pacts. While Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa labels the statement sufficient proof of Sajid's lack of political morality. The Comeback Kid. Former President Maitri Pala Sirisena announces April parliamentary bid due to popular demand. Signs of change. In welcome news for Sri Lanka's export sector, the European Union announces the extension of its GSP Plus facility up to 2023. Picking sides, the latest leaked Rwandan recording casts more doubt over the independence and bipartisan stance of yet another exposed individual. All this and much more coming up on this Sunday, the 19th of January 2020. From Ada Verana. This is other there in our first at nine. PC nicking cut winner. Anti jo mouthwash summoning in a close up gel like a story a start karana. Hi. Hi. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Shanila Fernando. Moving on to your top stories for tonight. The exposure of several prominent figures with the release of the controversial Ranjan Ramanayaka audio recordings has created much public doubt over the objectivity of the individuals in question, leading to the MP's arrest and remanding on charges of interference with the country's judiciary. These questions look to be further enhanced in the latest tranche of the leaked recordings to come to light, this time featuring a conversation between the parliamentarian and BBC journalist Azam Amin. The audio recording was made public today at a press conference called by the Sinhala organization who questioned the journalists independence and bias stance කොහමද අසාම් අමීන් එක්සත් ජාතික පක්ෂ ජනාධිපතිවරණ කැම්පේන් එක දියත් කරන්න මැදිහත් වුනේ ඒ සඳහා කොහමද රංජන රාමනායක හරහා උපදෙස් දෙන්නේ මෙන්න මේ බව මේ හඬ පටය ඇතුලේදී අපිට ඉතාම හොඳින් පැහැදිලි වෙනවා ඔව් මල්ලියා මොකද අපේ අනේ අම්මා නේ මයි මල්ලි කියලා වැඩන්නේ ආයි भय तोड़ू अनापना <laughs> 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 कारण रंजन राम नायक मंत्री तुम आगे फेसबुक गिनुम 
පවත්වගෙන යන ඇඩ්මින් වරු ප්‍රධාන වශයෙන් තුන් දෙනෙක් ඉන්නවා. ඒ කෙනෙක් රංජන් රාමනායක. දෙවෙනියට මේ නම කියවෙන අසාන් නමින්. තුන් වෙනියට ලකි වීරසිංහ ඉන්නේ. රංජන් රාමනායකගේ Facebook ගිනුමට අදාළ රහස් අංක දන්නේ රංජන් හැර තව දෙන්නයි. ඒ දෙන්නගෙන් ප්‍රධානියෙක් තමයි මේ අසාන් අමින් කියන්නේ. ඒකට අසාන් අමින් දිනපතා රට තුලත් සිද්ධ වෙන සියලු දේශපාලන වෙනස්කම් රංජන් රාමනායකගේ Facebook ගිනුම හරහා යාවත් කාලින කරනවා. එතකොට ඒ වෙනුවෙන් රංජන් රාමනායක අසාන් අමින් the leadership crisis within the United National Party seems to be escalating with preferences on the party leadership swaying in both swaying in uh, favor of both Ranil Vikramasinghe and Sajid Premadasa. Now expressing views to media, some members denied a crisis within the party with some calling for the sidelining of opportunistic parliamentarians who they allege back the current government expecting benefits in return. वर्तमान पार्लिमेंट मंत्री और उनके बहुत तरह एक हमेशा साजिद प्रेमदास महात्मा के तीन वाक्य निकलता है सीरी को तेजी ये तीन दो गाते हैं ना मुझे एक विवस्ता न कुल तीन दो वाक्य नहीं ने पक्षी नायक है विनो ओने में साजिद प्रेमदास महत्व है भाई ये नायक अत्यंत पक्षी में पक्षी पातकर पु क्रमे आती है ना संप्रदाय आती है ना हम दाम में पक्षी एकमाती कब तमाय में काटो तो केर लती है ने इधर इधर लादे वे ना काम में ये ऐ हिंदा अनिल विक्रम सिंह महत्या कारुजय सूर्य महत्या साजित प्रेमदास महत्या में हमों में कुतुबे ला कामरे ऐतुले साकच्छा कर ला मिन्न में कतामाई पक्षती इंदु अकेला प्रकाश एक न पत्ते न वा हैरिन एक एक तेंगोला नाय को पात कर ला में एक साथ जाती के पक्षे सांप्रदायक ने अभी बहुत तरह के में तलबा गत्ता साजित प्रेमदास में तुम्हारे समग्र दिरिया टेयान न एक न चंदे नोदी पु समाहरा हिटिया एक न विरुद्ध वेच्च समाहरा हमे Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says that both the opposition and the government must band together to tear up any foreign agreements, namely the AXA, MCC and the Singapore-Sri Lanka free trade agreement that were pushed for by the previous cabinet and which courted much controversy and public outcry. He made these comments at another public event organized to express gratitude to his supporters, this time in the Biagama area. Another meeting in the series of island-wide public events organized by opposition leader Sajid Premadasa to thank his voter base for the support extended to his unsuccessful presidential bid last year kicked off last evening in Biagama. Then pasukiya kaale ape aanduwa kape rajayak hetiyata weda katiyutu karagena yanakota apita vishala washayen kenahili kam keruwa den inna amithi waru tika. E indana mila sutraya weridi kiyala kaya gahala rata wate kaya gehu. E wagema rajaya karupu sama weda pilluwakma विवेचने के रूप में मिनिस्ट्रुंगे अल्लु हो दला एगोला जनादिपति वर्णे जायग्रहने के रूप में अदर सिंगापुर के राज्य टा बैंग इडाम विकुनान्ने एगोला में इधरी पाते हैं तो मेरे गोलां टा तुनें देखे बाले आ कावत में तुन्नी मेरा टा खाल जानो MCC, AXA, SOFA, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Velanagisu, may sell lakma, nirdele sa vivechane lakuna. Raja drohi, desha drohi, givisum kela kiwa. Jaya Sri Mahabodin Mahanse, Vandana Mana Karan Nanota, par ekapetta, Kamerika, Nani Petta, Sri Lanka. Ohoma kata kiwi. In a mama yojana karana, Tavadura kata bata vashane, the Metiwaran in Pasua, Masa kipe kata elati. आंडु पक्षे आई विपक्षे आई देखो लो में क्या हुएला एमसीसी द एक्सा द सोफा द सिंगापुर श्रीलंका की विसुंद में ओक्को में की विसुंद टिकी रहला था मुंग में क्या टन हटना में लक्ष्य अच्छा नहीं दूँगी नहीं जाना माते ये टक करूँ करन नेटो अभी बालों मु राजे टक खासे रुका वक्तीनों दिए लोई देकरन 
Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa expressed shock and amazement over opposition leader Sajid Premadasa's critical comments on the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact, despite being a member of the former cabinet that gave the nod for its signing. The Premier made these comments in a statement released today in response to on what he termed the folk-tongued stance of the UNP on the MCC Pact. Releasing a statement responding to comments of the newly appointed opposition leader and other UNP parliamentarians challenging the government to rip up the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact, the Prime Minister was equally critical, calling the comments adequate proof of the premadas led opposition's duplicity. The Prime Minister's statement read, quote, The opposition leader states on public platforms that the MCC pact should be torn up and that he will not allow the present government to implement it. Other MPs of the UNP have been making similar statements. I have been listening to all of this amazed. Highlighting the fact of the present opposition leader being a key member of the UNP cabinet, the Premier says, quote, With only a matter of days to the presidential election, the UNP cabinet officially decided to sign the MCC pact. Drawing attention to a written statement issued as the then opposition leader, the Premier says he requested the government of good governance to under no circumstances sign the agreement without informing Parliament and the general public about its contents. The Premier then proceeds to say that, quote, one can form a fair idea of the present opposition leader's political morality by what he is now saying about the MCC pact in the belief that the people have forgotten what the UNP was trying to do just two months ago. Touching on the current status of the agreement, Prime Minister Rajapaksa says that the committee appointed by the President will study contents of the MCC pact and once the findings of this committee are available, Parliament and the general public will be informed about the future course of action. Expressing his stance over the signing of the agreement, the Prime Minister says, quote, Under no circumstances will our government sign any agreement with a foreign country without informing the Parliament and the people. Furthermore, our government will not sign any agreement that is inimical to the interests of this country. Unquote. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Premier was seen in attendance at a religious event in Kalutara today. <laughs> Sudusu Nati Aya, Deshapal Nati Yodoneka, Yodola, Ongi Hashirim, Mulu, Deshapal Natama, Makalara Kosin the Maidakin, E Dunakatanian, recording her to Dagina, Eva, Ekutukaragan, Windania Klabanona, Vikurti, E Pilibando, at the same Apicanaga to Indo. Putgale could a Chodanaka and the Bamana Putgale Kravini, Mulu Tatibicha, Yelindala Pahala, Raja Siodina Vagi to Ayap Isas. Adugar Vuru, eighteen to dinner, Polombon, Usaswim Danganda, Polaman, Piovergan Nekapideka, Janadi Patura, Agamatura, Missil de Namakatago, Swadina, Katutu Kraiki and Daddy Viswasi, at the Bidilak Hilatino keeper the Niknisa, Agrimishakaratus, Wagaki Matino, me Adikarnate, Kerhiti Bicha, Viswasi, and Navata Gudanagan, Koyavasta, Tapiraje, Adikarnate Balapanda, Sudan and Ne, with eighteen Barapatalagama, Apidan Nanisa. Former President Maitri Pala Sirisena revealed that he would be contesting the forthcoming general election, considering requests made to him in this regard. Addressing a rally in Hinguragoda, the former president expressed the Sri Lanka Freedom Party's commitment to providing President Gotabe Rajapaksa the required two-thirds majority in parliament in order to assist the implementation of the country's development drive. Sri Lanka ni dahas pakshe vidya tapi de dahas dah ati palat pan meti warni Pradesh Sabha Nagar Sabha meti warni Lanka ini macam anda kat tapi dah hat laksya kita beri gana. Kota be raja paksa mahatmya jayak rahane keran apa laksya dah hat pahdi lesa macam sakti aku na. Ikan kisi macam bima dia aku na. Tamara ayat kian ni na. Teng April mas ini antem parlimen tu meti warni di beri. Apa pakshe kita ikut bela asangkala di mana guisu manu apa silu dina me meti warni tekat taran keran. Ada kota be raja paksa mahatmya ata parlimen tu ibal yak Nah, mama jalan itu betul betul jalan awal, mata betul betul, mata mana ada tu mata terpelah di. Maka deh, mahindra raja paksi mahat punya ada ikasi yang hatalis degak tu nampak alimen tu. Mama rani lekrum sing mahat punya agam itu keruah, ya ada hatalis satai nampak alimen tu di bumi. Namun te palemi ni awal udah di, mahindra raja paksi mahat tu mah. Agus semua sih, mahamet itu orang ini kan mada sampurna sahaja juga itu na. Eni sah parlimen itu pulang guna, tamu nan selat itu ita awas sebuti bunu anak panah terasiya parlimen itu tu nendeh ke balai samata kali itu samata keran. Dengan itu gota be raja paksi mahat ni ada parlimen itu balai ak neh. Eni sah itu mata beri keran, na alut tan dua kpi dia parlimen itu balai dengno ne. Api saya makin ek pegat itu la parlimen itu tu nendeh ke tasan na balai ak api aragan, beri balai ak. Mereka te itu biar na muli ke perasaan gula ta alut tan dua ke. Selain sum, sangwar dengan kearian kreatif kerana dia apa bala bodoh dia. Mama, mata tiba na kerja tiba na illi manuwa, mami meti warni itu diri pat penawa. Ege na api sahaja tiaga la tiba na jangan ada pun itu mak. Agam itu mak itu lulus silu dina ikat. Api bala bodoh tu, ni rata isra ada ni an. Silu dina ikat ikat tu bela berdekaran. 
Now, there has been a significant rise in the number of dengue patients in the country, especially during the past two months of 2019. According to the director of the National Dengue Control Unit, Dr. Anurajai Sekara, the rise in numbers is due to is mainly due to changing weather patterns such as the intermittent rain seen since August as well as previously dormant strains of dengue becoming active. While Sri Lanka has been through alternative patterns of dengue cases in the past, the number of dengue incidents has been growing over the last 10 years with patients being reported from every district in the country. The National Dengue Control Unit plans to contain the spread of dengue with the introduction of a bacteria known as Wolbachia. The bacteria grows inside the body of the mosquito and competes with the dengue virus for food and energy, preventing the transmission of the disease. The NDCU are planning for the release of the virus induced or the bacteria rather induced mosquitoes to happen in the first two weeks of February. More news on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. In your business news, as a positive move that is expected to increase optimism in the country's export sector, the European Union has decided to extend the country's GSP Plus facility up to the year 2023. This was announced when an European Union delegation met with Minister of Industrial Export Investment Promotion, Tourism and Aviation, Prasanna Ranatunga. Minister of Industrial Exports, Investment Promotion, Tourism and Aviation Prasanna Ranatunga met with representatives of the European Union recently, who announced the Union's decision to extend the country's GSP Plus facility up to 2023. Minister Ranatunga conveyed his gratitude on behalf of the government to the European Union for their support in this regard. In response to delegation's request for the recommencing of Sri Lankan Airlines routes to cater to countries within the European Union, the minister stated that work in this regard has already begun. Leading the delegation, Vice President of the European Union Thorsten Bagford added that EU investors are eager to invest in Sri Lanka following the stability of the country's security situation. The Sri Lankan government is to receive a 10.96 million US dollar grant for the development of the country's tourism industry from the government of South Korea. Ambassador to the South Korea in Sri Lanka, he only recently announced that the development grant will due to be provided this year. The grant is to be split into two focus areas with 5.6 million US dollars to be utilized for the development of a community friendly tourist village in Ethanavala in the Mathare district. The balance 5 5.6 million US dollars is to be used for the development of the Kuchaveli tourism zone. Ambassador Lee revealed that there remains a high level of interest in Sri Lanka among South Korean entrepreneurs who have taken note of the increased security following the election of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The number of Korean tourists visiting Sri Lanka fell by 22.6% last year following the deadly Easter Sunday attacks. But with the security situation having returned to normal, the ambassador believes that this situation could also change for the better. The Sri Lankan stocks meanwhile closed 0.14% weaker on volatile trade today dragged down by commercial bank. During the last week trading, the banking, finance and insurance sectors recorded the highest sector turnover while the diversified sector recorded the second highest. In the week ahead, analysts expect the stock market to show a positive momentum on the expectation of companies registering recoveries in most of the countries. Activity levels in the market are hence expected to be moderate. Foreigners are expected to continue their selling trend. However, local buying interest is expected to absorb the resultant impact. International and sports news on the other side of this break. Don't go away.
welcome back in your international news months long demonstrations between anti government protesters and lebanese security forces have turned violent in the country's capital beirut the protests have come about as the country was hit by its worst economic crisis in decades the lebanese lira has according to current data lost 60% of its currency value in the past months with prices of basic amenities soaring and people left unable to pay their bills Demonstrators vented their anger this week as they began smashing bank windows and ATMs. Public ire has been rife as the country has so far been unable to form a legitimate government for more than three months. So far, no progress appears to have been made towards finalizing the cabinet. Prime Minister Saad Hariri was forced to resign from his duties and is now leading the country in a caretaker role. According to the Lebanese Red Cross, more than 100 people had been treated for injuries with at least 65 others hospitalized so far. The much-anticipated impeachment trial of U.S. President Donald Trump is scheduled to begin in just two days' time on Tuesday. Trump is accused of charges relating to abuse of power and obstruction of Congress in relation to the leaked phone calls between the beleaguered U.S. President and Ukrainian officials, where he urges investigations to be commenced into former Vice President Joe Biden. Democratic lawmakers leading the case laid out their arguments supporting the charges in a 111-page document ahead of the proceedings. Democrats also called for the removal of Trump from the 2020 presidential election in which Trump is running for a second term in office. Lawmakers are urging the Senate to convict and remove President Trump to avoid long-term damage to the democratic values and the national security of the United States. Trump is the third U.S. president in history to face an impeachment trial. In their first formal response to the charges, Trump's legal team has denied any wrongdoing and branded the case a dangerous act on democracy. They are expected to release a longer response on Monday to the Democrats' pre-trial claims. Now, Buckingham Palace announced that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will no longer use the HRH titles and will not receive public funds for royal duties. The couple will also no longer formally represent the Queen. The statement added that the former Duke and Duchess of Sussex also intend to repay £2.4 million of taxpayer money for the refurbishment of Frogmer Cottage which will remain their UK family home. The palace says that the new arrangement will come into effect in the spring this year. The statement comes after the Queen held talks with the couple last Monday about their future, following their announcement that they wanted to step back as senior royals and divide their time between the UK and Canada. Earlier this month, Harry and Meghan said they wanted to create a progressive new role within the institution where they would be financially independent and divide their time between UK and North America. Last year, the duo openly spoke about the difficulties of royal life and the intrusive media scrutiny faced by them. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited his home city of St. Petersburg yesterday to pay tribute to victims of the Leningrad siege, one of the most harrowing battles of World War II. The siege of the Leningrad claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people who died of starvation and bombardment becoming one of the longest and deadliest sieges in the history of warfare. The lifting of the blockade on 27th January 1944 marked a major Soviet victory in the war. Putin laid flowers at the memorial cemetery to pay tribute to the blockade victims, including his elder brother Victor, who died during the siege. He also addressed World War II veterans at the memorial concert and praised their valor and commitment during the war. Putin also stated that Russia would create a center which would collect various co content regarding the Soviet Union's role in World War II.
And the Chinese state health authorities have reported 70 new cases of pneumonia caused by a new coronavirus strain today, stroking fears of it spreading in the lead up to the Chinese Lunar New Year that sees hundreds of millions of Chinese traveling to their hometowns across the country. The Wuhan Municipal Health Commission reported that the total number of patients infected by the virus has now increased to 62, with three of the patients considered seriously ill. So far, only two patients have succumbed to the virus. The new coronavirus strain stems from the same large family of coronaviruses that includes the deadly SARS virus that killed nearly 800 people across the globe through 2002 and 2003. According to Chinese state media reports, quoting senior medical experts revealed that the initial assessments appear to show that the virus may not be as deadly as they feared. In the report, Deputy Director of the Wuhan Jintian Hospital, Dr. Huan Chaolin, revealed that 19 patients have been cured and released from hospital to date, leading to the conclusion that the pneumonia can be cured. In your sports news, day one of the first test between Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe is currently underway at the Harare Sports Club. This is the first time that Zimbabwe is hosting a test series since 2017. Zimbabwe won the toss and elected to bat first. Zimbabwe's opening pair of Kevin Kazuza and Prince Maswaure put up a 96-run partnership before Maswaure was eventually caught off the bowling of Lasith Ambuldenia shortly after reaching his maiden half-century. Debutant Kevin Kazuza also scored a half century before falling for 63 runs off the bowling of Lahiru Kumara. Craig Evans, Craig Irvin rather, also reached his half century a short while ago. Zimbabwe are currently 189 for the loss of two wickets, with bad light having stopped play. That's a wrap from here at First at 9. Thank you for joining. I'm Shinala Fernando. Good night.